In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to ungroup and customize free images that are in an EPS format using PowerPoint. So what I have here is a free image. I got that from freepick.com. So it's a vector image and it's in .eps format. So I insert that on your slide. And um, the first thing we want to do is we want to ungroup it. Now when you bring it in, let's see if we can see it here. When you bring it in, vector images should be nice and crisp. But you may actually notice that it doesn't look crisp uh, when you first bring it in. And that's okay uh, because we're going to make a few modifications here. So as you can see right now, it doesn't look crisp. I'm going to go ahead and right click and select ungroup. And you can see we've got the group option and ungroup. And now you'll have this question ask if you want to convert it. We'll say yes. And now you'll notice all of a sudden it's nice and smooth. And then you can continue to ungroup it until it's completely uh, ungrouped into individual shapes. Sometimes vector images are actually made up of a number of uh, groups of shapes. So you may have like a grouped boy here and a grouped girl there and a grouped boy here. So what I like to do is use the keyboard shortcut. So I'm going to select the uh, image here and I'm going to hit Control Shift G and that ungroups and I can just keep hitting Control Shift G until I get that noise. Now I know everything's ungrouped and I can start to get rid of the things uh, that I want to get rid of. Uh, one thing to think about is when you're working with an object that's got a lot of groups in there, you always have your selection pane. So if you go to select and then there's your selection pane, this will actually have all the objects uh, that you have on the screen. Now of course there's a lot of objects, but you'll notice if I show or hide objects, like here it looks like this is her hand. If I show or hide objects, it'll be easier to uh, select and get rid of things. I'm just going to go ahead and start by deleting the background. Let's say I want to isolate the guy here on his computer. So a lot of times you get like an extra background image. Go ahead and delete that. And you can see there's still more, so we'll delete that. Now it's all gone. If, if you click and drag, you can see all everything that's being selected. In this case, I'm just going to select this kid. Now one thing when you're selecting objects, as long as you don't select the entire object, like for example, if I want to select the iPhone or smartphone here, if I don't have it completely selected, it doesn't get selected as you can see right here. Um, so that's a good way to work around this. So I'm just going to select here. This looks like I'm just going to get just the kid. That looks good. So I've got the kid and his iPhone or whatever that is. I'm going to hit Control G. That groups them. So now I can move them out of the way. Uh, you can see there's some shoes on there. So I may uh, want to change the color so it's easy to find. Uh, same thing with the young woman here. I'm going to go ahead and select everything. Now I don't want to select the table leg, so that's why I'm just going to be careful that I don't select it all. And I've got the woman here, Control G. I group her. Now you can see this is where the selection pane comes in handy. So I can just call this one girl. And so now I've I can easily find her. And I go to this other group here, which is going to be him, right? So I'll just say um, boy phone. So I've got the boy with the phone. And I'm going to go ahead and let's click and delete these things here. Get rid of all this other stuff. Now when I select this, I've got just the guy at his desk. I can hit Control G, group it, and we can go here and let's call this um, boy desk. And now if we look at it, we really only have three objects in the selection panel. So it's really easy for me to find this. Now let's say in this case, see I can't see his feet, so I may want to colorize his shoes. So this is how you can start to customize the image. They're vector images as well, so they're going to scale really well. So you may want to move this off screen so you can see the shoes better. So I'm going to hit Control Shift G. That ungroups it. And then I might change the color of his shoes. So I'm just going to, we'll just, um, let's see here. Uh, let's just choose an orange and then I can mess around with the outline as well if I if I want to do that. But we'll just keep it simple. We'll fill this one as well. So now I can select them again. Control G, group it. And now you can see when I ungrouped it and grouped it, I lost the name. Let me show you one other thing. I'm going to go backwards here to where we were before. Um, since it's grouped, I can come to these shoes and you can see I've got the shoes here. So I can just customize them without ungrouping the shape. And 
uh, you'll notice now that it still has the title in there. So it's very easy to uh, mess around with these images. And so then once you have those and you like you and you want to use them in your course, you can use them this way as isolated images. If you want to save them and use them in another application, for example, I'm working in PowerPoint, I may want to bring these into my storyline course. Uh, so what I'll do is I'd make these images as big as possible just so I get a really nice crisp image. Then I'd right click. I'm going to save as image. And then what I would do is I would choose the PNG format which you see right here. Um, and that'll just retain the transparency and it'll be a bitmapped image. So it'll be a little easier to work with when I'm in Storyline. So it's as easy as that. So uh, make your customizations. You can change hair color, skin tone, clothes color, mix and match objects. It really doesn't matter. Uh, and then you've got these vector images that you can use in your other applications. There is one warning and here's a good example that I found. So here's the vector shape. I have this and you'll notice there's a gradient shadow here. So when you're working with gradients, watch what happens when I ungroup this. I'm actually going to duplicate it so you can see the difference. So I'm going to ungroup this and watch what happens to the gradient. So the gradients now are all messed up. So I'd have to go in there and do a lot more cleanup. And so everywhere where there's a gradient, it's actually going to be a number of shapes that I'd work with. So if I keep hitting Control Shift G, Control Shift G, uh, it starts to get really messy. And you can see it's almost cuts to a point where you've got 8400 uh, images to work with and that's just impossible to work with and, and just a mess to clean up where when we look at this even all together it was only a hundred and something images. So just something to keep in mind when you're working with uh, gradients that you're just going to have a lot more work. So I usually just avoid images, EPS images in PowerPoint that have those gradients. Hope that helps.